that I built over the last um, few months. Sorry, took me so long. I uh, went through a few iterations, um, some more successful, some um, not so successful. Um, but this one seems to work uh, quite reliable. Um, it goes into the 11-pin um, port, and uh, you can see it has a, has a status LED that hopefully starts blinking, which means that it is connected to uh, my Wi-Fi. And um, I, this is um, built on an uh, ESP3266, um, same chips as you see here in this um, earlier version. Um, now, this chip is working on 3.3 volt uh, logic level. Um, so I used a, a fairly simple uh, resistor divide voltage divider to connect the um, output, the 5 volt uh, sharp uh, 850 um, transmit signal to the 3.3 receive signal and in the, the other direction it works actually quite nicely the uh, the sharp is able to use the 3.3 volt logic level and understands the uh, uh, the logical high signal uh, now the um, the sharp uses uh, an inverted serial communication protocol uh, similar to rs232 uh, but at the um, at a 5 volt uh, log uh, logic level uh, or ttl level so um uh, I'm not using the RX and TX pin of the ESP, but instead I'm using uh, uh, other pins and the so-called soft um, serial library, which is able to invert the logic levels. So that does all the heavy lifting um, and uh, allows me to then relatively simply translate everything that comes in through the um, uh, the wireless, sorry, serial connection into um, a, a raw TCP IP connection. So um, uh, it also has uh, uh, a uh, power safe function. After a while, the LED starts blinking more frequently, and then you can either press the, um, uh, that's pin one, uh, to simply reset the, uh, the timeout timer. Uh, if it goes to sleep, it would simply stops blinking at all. Uh, if it starts uh, lighting up kind of permanently, then you know kind of there's something wrong with the Wi-Fi connection. And uh, this other pin here is uh, simply the reset pin uh, or reset button. So you press that one to um, uh, to wake it up. Uh, so it goes through a, a reboot cycle, wakes up the unit, and um, of course uh, you might then have to reconnect uh, depending on um, uh, how you connect to the device uh, from your PC or, or Mac. Or, um, uh, what you see here is this, uh, four holes or simply um, plus 3.3 volts, uh, RX, TX and ground. So you can reprogram as a, um, the device in case that you mess up uh, um, possibly the configuration. Um, the configuration is stored in um, a flash uh, file, so you can upload via OTAR uh, a new configuration file. It's an INI file, uh, SQL editable, um, and um, it also understands very simple AT commands. Now it's not a highs, <laughs> highs modem, uh, but you can change the uh, Wi-Fi configuration. You can change the baud rate. Uh, the sharp, of course, then uh, supports different baud rates from um, uh, 9,600 down to, I believe, 600, 1,200 or 600. And um, you, of course, then have to adjust this. Um, you can change the configuration either from the Wi-Fi port, so from your PC, or you can change it via the serial communication line from the sharp. Um, I'm currently working on a simple configuration program that makes that process a bit easier. Um, what else to mention? Um, I'm actually quite happy and proud, I want to say, about the um, this 3D printed uh, connector. Uh, it doesn't focus right now. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, it fits relatively nicely into the, um, 
the side of the uh, um, side of the sharp. Um, it does not protect you from plugging it in the wrong way around. Um, so I, I did this once. It didn't damage either device, um, so it survived. I'm not sure if if some damage could happen if you leave it plugged in the wrong way. Um, simply, if you if you don't see the LED, then um, you know <laughs> you plugged it in the wrong way. Um, it kind of fits with the um, of the bottom of the device. Um, it uh, does no longer allow the um, the cover of the sharp kind of to be uh, slit the right way around. But if you use it kind of the, the wrong way up, um, you can simply cover the device. Um, so that works um, quite okay. Um, you can also cover it from the other side. You can, so you can always close it. Um, you just cannot flip it around as you can do if you don't have the connector uh, plugged in. So um, let me switch over to the other camera uh, to show you uh, ping. So hopefully that works. So I'm doing this in uh, Linux. It's Kubuntu um, because it uh, makes it a bit easier to connect to the device. Um, you can connect via netcat. Uh, so here I'm connecting with the G850V port 23, and then I can send a simple AT command CFG question mark uh, queries the current configuration uh, and the device kind of responds back. Uh, I could now, for example, issue another one uh, saying that plus plus AT plus CFG equals, so just copy of the string as it provides it back. Uh, so for example, sleep, let's change that to maybe 600 seconds. And that should give us the response back. So we see that it has taken the configuration. Um, you can also now save this configuration as the failsafe configuration. And then if you press the um, uh, the pin one button for uh, longer than four seconds, then it essentially, it loads the failsafe configuration, resets the device. Um, so for example, if you enter the wrong Wi-Fi credentials uh, or if your home Wi-Fi settings are changing, uh, if you want to change the OTA password, uh, for example, then um, uh, you, or if you have changed it and it was unsuccessful, uh, instead of breaking the device and then having to reflash it, you can then try to um, bring back the, the most recent working configuration. Um, so um, uh, let me show you how to actually uh, configure, uh, sorry, transmit uh, a file. Uh, let me see if I can show you the device down there. Um, so for example, here I've written a simple uh, Hello C program. Um, it doesn't do much really, uh, but let's try to send this to <clears throat> the computer. Uh, so we terminate netcat and we now say, netcat g850v port 23 and we simply dump this software hello c to the device now on the device uh, on the sharp uh, we go into the text editor uh, let's delete anything that's in there currently um, so you can see there's nothing in there right now in the co command, uh, we now load. And now I fire up the program. Um, so now the sharp should have loaded this. Uh, let's double check. 
and as you can see, it's now has arrived. Um, let's see if it works. Compile, go, and there it is. Uh, Marvel technology um, also works the other way around. Um, I can demo this uh, just going into Netcat. And then, of course, you can capture anything you receive, uh, but this way kind of you, you see it a, a bit better on the screen. So um, Netcat is not capturing anything that's arriving via the serial communication. So I go into text editor, CO, and now save. And then you see the program kind of arrived. You see the program arrived without line numbers. Um, that's the way I prefer it. Um, so in f the format configuration, uh, you can define, do you want to uh, uh, end of line uh, characters, do you want an end of file character, and do you want line numbers or not? You have to be careful here. Um, I, I number of times you know, messed up my programs or um, wasn't able to transmit the file. For example, if the uh, the sharp expects line numbers, but you send it without line numbers, then um, that's a problem. And vice versa, if um, uh, you send it with uh, line numbers, but the sharp doesn't, then it, 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 it doesn't automatically then correct for that problem. Uh, and then of course, you can also change the, um, the bot rate. Now, if you change it, on the sharp, you also then via the wireless connection have to change it on the Wi-Fi connector. Otherwise, the two devices, of course, cannot talk to each other anymore. Um, I also should point out that there is no uh, flow control. Uh, I'm pulling the uh, flow control lines to um, actually to plus five volt. Um, that's the only way I could make it work. Uh, I think usually you would have expect kind of to pull them to ground. Um, so RTS and CTS are, are connected on the sharp side. And um, uh, you can look up the uh, schematics and the, um, uh, the um, Gerber files, uh, the layout, uh, all the stuff is available on simplestuffmatters.com. Um, I've now also received um, from PCB Waste, <laughs> not that I'm sponsored by anyway, but they were simply the quickest and the cheapest. Um, I uh, received um, sort of a, a professionally kind of manufactured um, PCB. Um, let me actually show you so a bit of a unwrapping experience here, free of charge. Um, and whoops. Wait, and then I can show you kind of how it now looks. Um, you can also maybe appreciate a bit the um, evolution from what was like the first version was this non working. Um, one of the uh, earlier versions was this one. Uh, the first really working prototype was this. And then ultimately I arrived at this form factor. As you can see, kind of it's still kind of a, a, a bit smaller um, than the uh, the earlier version. Um, it's um, a double-sided PCB, and um, uh, it also has, of course, uh, a voltage converter uh, on there. M most of the components are um, all on one side. Uh, if you want to create the PCB kind of yourself um, and you wonder kind of how does the uh, the through connectors kind of work, um, I basically avoid using any of the pins of um, the through hole components uh, for sort of via like uh, connectivity and instead um, I have vias separately uh, so that I can basically kind of uh, stick a, a piece of wire kind of through and solder it. And I don't have to worry about not being able to solder the uh, through hole devices like the pin connectors, uh, the terminals on both sides. So um, all the connectors are only soldered here on, on one side, on, if you want the bottom side. Uh, the rest are just a couple of SMD 
uh, resistors, um, the ESP11, of course, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, if you're interested uh, in getting any of the, the PCBs that I've already created, um, get in touch. You can reach me on Twitter uh, under Chris Herman handle. Um, and I'm um, looking forward to hear from you. If you have questions, suggestions, comments, um, please um, get in touch. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.